what task force members said. And the mayor and I would also re you know, reiterate it at these meetings that we support our police. We appreciate everything they're doing for our community every day. And so whatever these recommendations are, they do not negate that support. They do not negate that appreciation. And so I am actually saddened um, that residents um, are, you know, reached out directly to the task force members um, criticizing their work because these task force members were committed. They, they gave all they could to this task force. And I hope if you have the time, you go back and watch these recordings and you'll understand and appreciate what I observed at every single task force meeting. Um, Mayor, do you want me to move into that first recommendation and just my thoughts on that recommendation? Mayor, I'd like to speak before okay. we do that. If I might. Okay, um, and if I could, I, I would ditto everything Nisa said and especially about the dedication of the task force. In fact, this last week, the task force met for three hours on Monday and three hours on Wednesday and one hour on Friday because they wanted to make sure that they got all of their work done. And um, they were very dedicated. And thank you also to uh, the police officers, uh, Captains McCrossan and Kraus, uh, Chief Galea, uh, John Angel, everyone who participated. It, it was quite an amazing and intense experience. It was. It was. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, so go ahead, um, uh, Anita, if you'd like to add some other comments. I would please. Um, I want to also thank the task force and the people who attended and contributed information to their efforts. The students, the parents, the other members of our community the members of city staff and the school district who participated. The amount of research, the documents, and I did review all of the documents, including the draft minutes, um, developed by the task force and their report and tonight's presentations represent an incredible amount of work in a very, very short period of time. I also wanna thank Judge Cordell for her work with the task force. Um, Judge, you may not remember, but we met in 1976 um, you were a newly practicing attorney. I was a newly designated head of an affirmative action program for women at the U.S. Geological Survey, working with people at NASA and seeking to include women of color to talk with managers and others about the double, double whammy facing women of color in the workforce. Later, I was an affirmative action officer and equal opportunity officer for a large part of a federal agency where I had negotiated, investigated and negotiated resolutions to complaints of discrimination. I have to tell you that many of the stories that I've listened to during the town hall and tonight take me back to the time during more than 35 years when I listened to people talk about their experiences. The stories that I've heard here remind me of so much of my own life experience, including more than 30 years ago when I sat with my sister wondering when her husband was going to get home so we could have dinner because he had, in fact, once again, been stopped for driving while being black. Yes, my brother-in-law is black and I've had the privilege of being able to have very, very deep conversations with him and with other friends of his and other friends of mine about their experiences because I will never know what it is to be black in America or a person of color. But I do have an obligation to do what is best for all of our community. And that is what I'm going to try and do during our deliberations tonight. I'm glad to hear that, Anita. Okay, it looks like Jeannie has her hand up. Go ahead, please, Jeannie. Involved. Um, the members of the task force, um, thank you so much for your service. I really do commend you for all the hours and all the passion. I actually would prefer to see us move forward in a direction not going one by one through all of this, but how do we create the environment that, you know, what's the environment that we can create within Andy Galea's team so they can hear firsthand and feel what's being felt and not feel threatened by what may be, a, what may be received on a black and white page, okay? Okay, I, I would really like us to consider specifically the recommendations that have been made from the task force uh, they have put a lot 
uh, of thought and work into this. And uh, Janine and Renee's presentations were great. They, they provided additional color around what these specific recommendations are. But I think we owe the task force a vote tonight. So Mayor, let me. I, I, that's I, what I would. That's what we're going to do. Mayor, Mayor, I agree. So the reason I, I separated the two is when I look at the written. The written says independent third party auditor. When I heard Janine speak on behalf, that's not the exact same words. Exactly. exactly. Intake. Yep. In, intake. That's so we can correct. change it to intake. Independent third party intake. Yes. The mayor and I may would may prefer, and going back to what Janine said earlier about semantics, we may prefer a different term, but we defer to the task force to make their recommendation. And this is our opportunity to discuss these recommendations. So mm -hmm. I support the mayor 100% that we go through each recommendation. And bottom line is if this goes back to staff and Chief Galea, and there are legal or other reasons why they're not able to implement it, then that's something that can come back to us. But I think our job tonight as council is to vote up or down on these recommendations and make tweaks. For example, if we wanna change the name from auditor to something else, I think that's within our role and authority tonight. So I think she, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, Janine called it an independent intake portal. So um, we could use that word instead to implement an online complaint commendation submission form submitted to both police department and an independent intake portal. I'd like to just kind of go through each of these and poll people as to uh, up or down. So, well, I guess I need to ask Jolie, do we need to do, do we need to have motions and uh, seconds on each one or to, or implementation or can we just go uh, consensus? I, just, just so we have a clear record, I would do a motion on each one. So I would recommend taking them item by item with the motion. And, and I would add if there was, if there were any tweaks to what the direction was, please make sure that that is also in the motion. So it's captured for the record and in the motion. I'll go ahead and make a motion to uh, implement an online complaint slash commendation submission form submitted to both police department and an independent intake portal. Second. I have a question. Sure. What does an independent intake portal, where does that go? It goes to uh, some, it, it's independent outside of the city. So it is not going to the city clerk's office or the city manager's office, it's to an outside party. And then once there's an intake, they get routed to the police department for investigation, correct? Exactly, they do not conduct investigations. Yes, I'm just clarifying for the record, thank you. Yeah. I think when this gets set up, I think um, the city attorney's office is going to look at this because I think they're there could be some ramifications with um, the police officers' personnel rights. So I would like- Well, and I will offer an amendment in order to move this forward expeditiously um, that we have an online complaint slash commendation, I would say slash feedback, because I think if we're going to encourage feedback, we ought to allow feedback, which may or may not be either a complaint or a commendation, uh, submission form submitted to the police department and, um, and stop there. And the reason is that in the interest of transparency, if all the complaints are going to be investigated by the police, then to me, an in, quote, independent third party portal doesn't do anything different, then I don't see what using an outside portal contributes. It's the fact that some people in our community may feel more comfortable making a complaint to an independent third party. It's the trust factor um, than going straight to the police department. I understand you. that. It just seems to me that that's not, in, in essence, it's a sort of a sham. Um, and I don't mean to put a loaded word on it, but as long as the police department is going to investigate them, I don't know why the route 
in matters. You're so, welcome you know, to vote against this if you don't like the way it's put together. You know, but I think there was a lot of discussion about by the task force about having it be an independent party. A number of people spoke tonight uh, about if someone's been abused, they aren't going to be feel comfortable complaining to the abuser. They need to be able to. So for what I understand is that this is like an independent hotline where they can report it and, yeah, and it's a hotline this independent group they're, they're not charged with investigation they're just assimilating the information and then bundling it and then taking it to the police department so that i think our next step should be to take people <laughs> such as janine and people from andy's team that actually could be the team that takes the the ideas and put them into place, okay, where they get to work together as a team and let's move this thing forward. Or let let the right people from staff, including PD, an implementation team to go and make this happen. Just responding to Councilmember Bruin's suggestion, I think we need to give this next group some direction. And even if it's at a conceptual level, this council needs to agree on certain things. So for example, do we support an online complaint commendation submission form? That's it. Do we support having an independent third party um, intake process? And then we can leave it up to them to delve into those details. I mean, we don't have to take the recommendation word for word because there's some things in here I don't agree with so that whoever takes this up can actually implement it with clear direction from us. So I have a question and um, we do support the spirit of everything that's been stated. What bothers me or pushing forward without clear information for me is this third party thing. I don't know what the finance, the cost of it is. I need to better understand it I need to, I understand that, yes, we do have an online process. I understand that it can be improved. We can make it simpler and more accessible. Vice Mayor Flygor, which will be the mayor, can work with Council Member Enander and work with the police department to improve upon that process. But I think just trying to push whole hog when there's still more information that's needed is concerning to me. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the table here. Please restate the motion. The motion is to implement an online complaint slash commendation submission form submitted to both the police department and an independent intake portal. And I think based on the discussion, uh, we would say that the, the staff will work with whoever task force members or whatever to figure out how to properly implement this. So um, we have a, mo a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Um, Council Member Bruins? Yes. Council Member Nander? No. Council Member Leeing? Um, I can't move forward at this at this time. I, I just feel that I do not have enough information um, and the financial impact that this will bear upon us. And I, I, without that, I can't I can't support it at this time. Vice Mayor Flieger. Yes. And Mayor Pepper. Yes. The motion passes three to two. Uh, the next motion I would make is to, um, is the second recommendation from this task force, which is in addition to the police department, submissions of hard copy online complaints and phone calls can be made to the independent intake portal, uh, police and this independent third 
uh, intake portal will immediately within one or two business days share complaints received with the other. So Mayor, I, I would love to second your motion. I actually would want to do a friendly amendment. Okay. I'm not supportive of saying immediately within one or two business days. That's something I would put within a reasonable amount of time. I will accept that friendly amendment. Second. I have a question. Yeah, I need um, a What I'm, I'm a little confused about given the wording is that in addition to the police department, people could call into an independent third party auditor. And then it says that the police department and independent third party would share complaints received with the other. Does that mean that any phone complaints that came into the police department would get shared with the independent auditor? Is that what that means? Yes, it means that so that so that they know so that independent auditor. So they know the content or the quantity because it says well immediately share complaints. Does that mean sharing the content of the complaints? Yes. Because even on the phone, they'd be filling out a form. They'd be taking certain information. So the online would be submitted and the portal would take it both to the police department and to the independent third party entity. So you, there would be no sharing necessary. These are very um, smart web-based online tools. The goal is to make sure everything is captured. Right. And so, and again, this is why I said, for me, if we're going to go down to these, approving these little words here, it makes it sound like a directive that we told you how to do it. I think and, that's and I, I just want to say that, you know, we do have police officer privacy rights. And so, if people are making complaints about certain officers and their names, and I think we're going to have to look at that um, for a position of Public Records Act. I mean, these aren't names of officers that are involved in police shootings or something. These are just complaints against officers. And then now this information is now going to be public. Oh, it's not gonna be well, no, you said it's a it's a public portal and people can come no, no, in no, and the people no, can no. ask for it. So that's no, what Jolie, I want. Jolie, Jolie, back up. The public, the portal, just think, there's a way for me to provide the information into the system. Okay, yes. that's talking about public portal. That's all we're talking about. We're not talking about a public portal that public, that populates a public screen of information. I just, I, I still think we need to really look at this about pursuant to Public Records Act, because once we have a public portal, it can be a public record. And so I'm just, I don't want to, I don't want people to be disappointed when yeah. the public says, I want access to that public portal and you're not giving it to me. So I'm, you know, I, I'm doing that. my job here just saying, hey, heads up, it may not be a truly public portal. And I wouldn't use the word public and, and whatever is requested, obviously, Jolie, we redact what's confidential. I, I thought that the, the, on. that the role was also to do the reporting. Yeah, That's another. That's I mean, just on the sharing. Well, um, you know, I guess if I. Janine talked about was the independent intake portal, which I think we have agreed to, a digital intake process with a, a tracking database. So, um, you know, a, a way to track the details in the same way, including a annual report that aggregates the data, it does, but would keep the names of individuals and uh, officers confidential. So I think that's what we're, we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we just spent 300,000, over 300,000 to update our system. We got a budget issue that's coming up and we're gonna move forward on this without understanding how the, it's gonna impact our budget again. I'm concerned where this is, what this is, and that's the reason why I'd like to better understand this. Work. So I was asked by the task force to find out how much it would cost, given the low number of complaints that come into the city of Los Altos. And so 
I reached out to someone who has done this kind of work and the person got back to me and said that it would be probably very easy to find someone, a third party, who could be an alternative where the public had come to, to bring complaints and that it would range anywhere from per year, it could be as low as $2,000, uh, it could be as much as $10,000. Again, it depends on, it would be an hourly rate or whatever agreement you worked out with this person. Thank you, Judge Cordell. So I think you, she said between two and $10,000 per year. So hopefully that, that's helpful, Lynette, in your, to make you feel more comfortable about this. I mean, we heard a lot of people speaking about how police are authority figures and it would be scary to file a complaint against an authority figure with the authority figure, but to have a, an outside agent that is not threatening to allow you to file that complaint. So it's less scary. I think right now this one is that the, the information would be shared within a reasonable amount of time between these two entities. We have a motion and a second. Could we get a roll call vote, please? Please go ahead, Andrea. Okay, Council Member Bruins. Aye. Council Member Neander. Come back to me, please. I'm sorry, can you come back to me, please, Andrea? Yes, I, yes, I did. Council Member Liang. So I'm concerned because um, our city attorney had raised some concerns about this item. Jolie, are you going to be able to clarify your concerns? No, I, I, I think the way it's set up is this is a third party reporting system and this third party will not be doing any investigation and that is what i was concerned about um and the other thing about this is that they're just going to be collecting information um and then we'll have to look at what happens to this information because there will be names of victims, there will be names of officers that, um, that you know, when we, when we set this up with a third party person, um, we're just gonna have to be very careful about public records requests, because if we send out all this information that's being collected by this third party entity of the city, it doesn't mean you know, I, I have to look at this on a, from a public records point of view where we, we need to protect names of, you know, essentially, you know, I'm concerned about names of victims and, and stuff like that. So I, I think it can be set up as I was concerned that maybe this third party was also going to be part of the investigation, which I had a little, con I did have some concerns about. It's just a third party, like a hot a hotline reporting. They take that information, they would take it in confidence and it would be confidential. And if we got a public records request for this, I would not want um, a victim are a potential victim be subject to a public records request saying they now they've reported it and now you know the newspaper can get these names of people that have complained i'm I, it, i'm just saying that's one side of it and then so anyway no i think how it would be set up i i'm more comfortable with it as i hear it, it, about it now lynette so in the response where staff stated some concerns with the responsibility of the third party is recommended to only include intake of complaints, tracking of complaints, and the production of the annual report, correct? So is that problematic, Julie? No, I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not seeing that as problematic at this point, so the yes. arrangement with this third party provider that it would say that 
this third party provider is going to be protecting this information and this information would be they would be responsible for keeping it confidential just because a third party collects the information it doesn't make that it doesn't mean that it's public records and the way the public records act is is having information stored by third parties still be a public records and i don't know if the judge cordell wants to weigh in on that but it um i just want to be very careful about victim information and making sure this information is confidential you can work out an agreement with whomever you decide to bring in like i said if it's a retired attorney and the understanding is that the complaint is confidential, cannot be revealed, and you can, I think a simple MOU will take care of, of that issue. And I think that can actually easily be handled because it's been done. Yeah. We're in the middle of a vote here. I think we may have forgotten that. So um, uh, Lynette, I think you were, you were asked some questions that you had been called to make your vote. Um. Andrea, come back to me, please. Vice Mayor Flieger? Yes. Mayor Pepper? Yes. Council Member Enander? I'm going to vote yes with a very big caveat, and that is it is my understanding that this third party does not analyze, does not interpret, um, and does not interact in the, the process at all. And I see the vice mayor nodding her head that this is you mean the investigative a, process. A, a, a clerical, this becomes essentially a clerical function. Oh. That's right. It's the intake portal. Well, the report, reporting part is a clerical function that they are not going to assign cause, effect, character. No, or, they are not. No, there's no, no analysis. Okay. That, and they're not you. part of the investigative process either. That's reassuring. Thank you. I think we need to put some language where it says that it needs to have the, the, the that, that third party needs to have a clear MOU that is well, there has to be protection. I think that I, I trust I think that the attorney will with follow the, up on that. Making sure that we have the language that state ensuring Protect everybody. Yeah, proper protections of everyone involved. And before I lost connectivity, I mean that that was the point I was making. Whatever we recommend, legal has to bless it <laughs> and i trust that julie will look at whatever the final proposed process is and ensure it complies with all laws and have the right contracts in place okay we're still waiting for and, and i believe i'll work with um, judge cordell and make sure that we we get something like she's used before and something that has been tried and true so i think that i i i feel confident that we will have um protections in place Great. And can we put a cap on um, how much we spend for our first year on that? No, I'm not changing the motion again. So can we please have your vote? It's it's getting late. I want to keep moving on. Council member Leeing. I'll abstain on that one. Okay. So the, the motion passes for to zero with, with one abstention. The next recommendation from the task force talks about informal and formal complaints and that the um, formal complaints shall not exceed one year for the, from the submission date, um, that it will be investigated. May I, may I clarify? Please. There is a, there is a departmental policy, police department, uh, department policy that all complaints shall be processed resolution within a year in there's a complaint and there's a finding of misconduct if the officer is not disciplined within one year of the complaint being filed the officer cannot be disciplined that's the law so that's why the one year is there 
Well, it's 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 part of the city policy. They they this is not made up. Already there are two. There may be more than two, but there are two types of complaints: formal and informal. Formal is you fill out the form and submit it in. Informal, a person may call and say, "I have a concern about a police policy," um, or that kind of a thing, where they're maybe not concerned about the conduct so much as the policy that enabled an officer to do something. So that's more informal. Um, and that that's already exists in the city of Los Altos. They just haven't been tracking the informal as much as the formal. So that the idea was to put them together. Janine? They still want to log it. And sometimes repeated informal complaints can lead to um, other conclusions that only the compilation of data can surmise. But if you don't track it, you kind of lose that traceability after talking with both captains, having both types of complaints entered into the tracking database. And then, as it says here in the wording, specifically noting when when an informal complaint gets escalated by the PD to become a formal complaint, that should be noted because that shows. So I, th so I think the next motion maybe on this one would be that we would have a tracking database that would track both formal and informal complaints and that the uh, independent intake portal will uh, publish an annual report on the numbers of informal and formal complaints. Any formal complaint will be investigated within a year. And I support that, Mayor. I do have a friendly amendment law. There are a lot of police reform laws taking place right now. And so I would want to add to that, not exceed one year or as required by law. Um, so that's the only addition I would make to your, your motion, but I second it. I accept it. Mayor Pepper, on one note is the that the attached in, uh, there's a list that is attached that's part of this recommendation that shows all the data that we recommend being tracked. Um, six of our report. There's a list of 20 items. So is that what you're saying is suggested to be in that tracking database? So we would incorporate the list, uh, the tracking database to track formal and informal complaints based on the list uh, on page six of the staff report and to investigate within one year or as as required by law. Is that what you said, Nisa? Yes, Mayor. Okay. Um, and with a with the um, third party providing an annual report for the council and to be posted on the website uh, to the public on the so mayor if I may on, so on the list doing? The list um, that was presented, I would prefer to keep that separate from the motion. For example, if I heard correctly, I think Chief Galea was saying in the letter that he sent the complainants, he obviously doesn't describe the discipline that was imposed. And I remember one of the items, and there may be others. And so I want to make sure that the motion doesn't require, because I don't think we have fed in all these um, tracking data points. Mm -hmm. um, That's my so concern I also. And so when they design this process, they've got to figure out whether that is a database with rights in terms of who gets to see things or whether it's two separate things where this is the fully loaded one in our domain and this is the high level one in, in the third part. So, okay. With the appropriate protections. Yes, with the appropriate uh, protections. Such. So I accept that as an amendment. Okay, so we have a, a, a motion and a second. Can we please have a vote? Sure. Council Member Bruins? Aye. Council Member Enander? Yes. Council Member Lee Ng? Yes. Vice Mayor Fleiger? Yes. Mayor Pepper? Yes. Thank you. That passes by 5 0. Thank you. And then the next part, I think, is on our outreach. Their, their recommendation is says consider modifications to the complaint brochure. So we will consider those things and any other suggestions that may come up as a result of the police looking at their own. The motion is to consider modifications to the complaint brochure, including those suggested by the task force. Okay. Got a motion. That's my motion. Second. 
Can we have a roll call vote, please? Chair Council Member Bruins? Aye. Council Member Enander? Yes. Council Member Lee Ng? Yes. Vice Mayor Flagger? Yes. Mayor Pepper? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes 5 0. The intent of the task force. Are you talking about number two? Number two, yes. The provide outreach education? Yes. That was, we, we, we are, our recommendation is to prescribe and execute and effect these uh, five points. All five of them. Correct. As to whether or not you guys choose to make it an all or none, I guess your decision, but those are our five recommendations. Uh, Mayor, may I ask um, Ms. Ballard has a question on item num um, 2E? Just to clarify on um, the interaction and, and what the task force means by unless the officer is unable to do so. I'm concerned about mandating this so that if an officer for whatever reason fails to do it, they're in violation of the policy. So when you say unless the officer is unable to do so, what do you mean? I think the word should be unless the officer is, has good cause not to do it. Oh. Because well, that's a that is that another problem. No, that's well, a legal well, that's a legal term. If the yes, officer is. has good, if the <laughs> officer has good cause, then the officer doesn't have to do it. So this came this came directly from the captains in that they all the cops have business cards and they carry them, and many of them do informally hand them out, and they always hand them out if they're asked. What we were suggesting was to put the um, complaint portal uh, in the back of the card. But even if we don't do that, that was just something to consider. But then the captains, I think it was Captain Krause, um, said, well, let me just let you know that there may be times in, in a given interaction that the officer is literally unable to hand. There's no transaction. Example she used was if there is a use of force or if there is some danger that precludes them. She accepted the wording here but wanted that qualifier, that provisor, proviso added. And that was the wording that she, um, she- no, let me let me correct that because this is this is Captain Kraus. I was never oh, the one. I did not speak on that at all. Okay, um, so then- Maybe it was the other captain, but we did not recommend this business card or brochure being handed. We answered questions, but we didn't give any recommendations on that. I believe our uh, police department recommendations are in the staff report. No, I, I was gone for two of the meetings. It possibly was Captain uh, McLaughlin. He is not on the call right now. So I don't know where that wording came from, but um, that was our staff recommendations are in uh, the staff report. Uh, Captain, those were not provided actually. So um, Mayor, I'd, I'd like to move item two A through D and specifically leave E to further discussion within the department, because I think a lot of what was said was very persuasive about giving people, um, encouraging people to provide feedback to their interactions. But I would like to leave that to the discretion for now, at least to the discretion of the department as to how they think they wanna handle um, encouraging feedback on interactions in an appropriate circumstance. Oh, Councilmember Enander, can I make a friendly amendment addressing your concern? Because I would love to include some portion of E. I am concerned about making it mandatory, setting up for officers to violate a policy. I am. At every traffic stop and pedestrian stop, officers shall endeavor or use best efforts to give information about how to file. So if they fail to do it for whatever reason, that's fine, but they're definitely encouraged to do it and use best efforts to do so. There, there are going to be situations where, for whatever reason, they're not able to, but they shouldn't be penalized if, you know, because they violated the policy. If we're so hard and it's like you must do it, and if they fail to do it, then someone can say, "Gotcha! I know the policy. It says you must give me a brochure, and you fail to do that." That is my concern, but I definitely want strong wording to encourage them to do this because I think it's a good thing. Then the I think we should say that, that um, officers are encouraged to provide a business card and a brochure to um, at traffic stops and pedestrian stops. 
but it's their it's their discretion which they use and there's no um standard here or requirement that they can be gotcha on i don't like the word discretion but i could support strongly and encourage to do so do and that's why i'm saying you know chief can chief will handle this he the the goal we understand the goal the goal is to try and get more feedback from the community in all ways shape and form on the interactions with our officers and I do want to leave. Are you minutes. saying is this what it says now? So E says at every traffic stop and pedestrian stop, officers are strongly encouraged to give information on how to file a complaint slash commendation on a business card and or brochure unless the officer is unable to do so. No, that's what Nisa suggested changing. We get rid of unless the officer is unable to do so. Nisa, you want to repeat your suggestion, please? Uh, you know I'm not gonna remember. <laughs> Um, at every traffic stop and pedestrian stop, um, I, I, my original suggestion was officers shall use best efforts to do to provide this information um, to civilians. But I am open to saying are strongly encouraged if that gets us the support we need to include. Each. I would like it to be strongly encouraged because I would like the chief to have some discussion how he's going to approach this. Okay, and then our, we're, we're leaving out unless the officer is unable to do so. so Correct. We encourage to give information on how to file a complaint commendation on a business card and or brochure. Correct. And I seconded so, that motion. All right, so it, so set, moved by E. Nander, seconded by Lee Ng. We have a roll call vote, please. Yes, Council Member Bruins. Hang on, pass me up. I, have to, I, we, I got distracted from, from A through D. So give me a moment. Okay. Uh, Council Member Eneander? Yes. Council Member Lee Ng? Yes. Vice Mayor Flieger? Yes. Mayor Pepper? Yes. Council Member Bruins? Yes, I think it's worded enough. I just didn't want something that's like graffiti everywhere. So I think it's reasonable. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Great. And I really like the idea of the business cards, just by the way, because, you know, I think of our police as community policing. And you know what, when I, if I can walk away with a business card that actually has the name in case I forgot to even look at their badge. And then the flip side, you know, there's this and maybe there's other, you know, hotline type of information we want to put on the back of the business card. But, you know, but I just like that idea because to me, it, it represents community policing. 